Today we're going to look at fractions and decimals, how to write fractions as a decimal, and how to write decimals as a fraction. I've written out some of those problems for you, and the type of problems that we'll see. In this case, we'd have the answer, though. You'd be converting a decimal number to a mixed number. If we were to read these, that's what really helps us, knowing how to read our decimal numbers. This is 3 and 17 hundredths. And that's how we write our mixed number, 3 and 17 over 100. 3 and 17 hundredths. 8 and 6 tenths. Oh, 8 holes, right? 6 tenths. This is how I write 6 tenths. 8 and 6 tenths. I'll give you another example. Do you remember how to read this here? Read it. What would you write for your mixed number then? Write four holes. In the denominator, you would put, and in the numerator, of course, you would put 23. Four and 23 hundredths, four and 23 hundredths. So knowing how to read a decimal number can help you write that mixed number. Here's four of them for you to try. I would say the bottom two are probably the trickiest. So don't get tricked. Go ahead and hit pause. And we are writing the mixed number for each of these. We are writing the mixed number for each of these. So I'll come back with those first two answers. 13 and 62 hundredths. Yep. 4 and 3 tenths. This is 6 and 7 hundredths. How would I write that? Okay. Did you come up with that first one? Is that what you wrote? How would I read this last number? 12 and 163 thousandths. So the 12 is pretty obvious. Did you write 163 over 1,000? 163 thousandths. Let's move on. One other thing that you might be asked to do is you might be asked to write the fractions in simplest form. So the one that is not in simplest form here is this first one here, 13 and 62 hundredths. And then so what we would have to do is we would have to simplify that there. Let me add a screen. So 13 and 62 hundredths in simplest form, what we do is we divide by 2 in the numerator and denominator, and then so we get 13 and 31 fiftieths. And we know at that point that's in simplest form because 31 is a prime number. From before, we saw it written like this here, where we are working to change a decimal number over to a mixed number. We might also be asked to change a mixed number to a decimal. So you might be given something like this. That'd be pretty easy. You'd be like, okay, well, that's 12.5. You might be given something like this here. That might be a little bit more difficult for you, but you know, and you're all 13 and 3 hundredths. Okay, well, in decimal form for 13 and 3 hundredths, 13 and 3 hundredths, okay, 13, and then I have to write a point, and then I have to put a placeholder for the zero there for the 3, so that that 3 there is worth hundredths and 3 hundredths. So that one was a little trickier. I'll give you another problem. Sixteen and one tenth. I'd write sixteen point one. Sixteen and one tenth. Now, this is all fine and easy when we have a ten here, a hundred here, ten here, and the denominator. In other words, we have tenths, hundredths, or even thousandths. But what happens when we don't? 
What happens when we have something like one half? Do you know the decimal equivalent for one half? Were you thinking zero point two? Were you thinking zero point one two? Were you thinking zero point five? Hopefully you are thinking this right here, five tenths. The reason is this, one half. We want to target and we want to shoot our denominator and we want to shoot for tenths, hundredths, or thousandths. And in this case, we can go to, from two to 10 and then we're finding an equivalent fraction for one half. And we find that equivalent fraction for one half by multiplying the denominator and the numerator by that same number, one times five is five, that's five tenths. And then so that there is the decimal equivalent for five tenths. One half, that's the decimal equivalent. So what we're shooting for is a 10, a 100, or even a 1,000 in the denominator. So I'm trying to write the decimals number for each of these fractions. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a 7 and 3 20 That way I have a mixed number in there as well. If I'm writing the decimal equivalent for this here, what I'm going to do again is I'm looking for tenths. I'm looking for hundredths or thousandths. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make this into what? What's easiest? Tenths is easiest, I think. I'm going to write an equivalent fraction for it to help me figure out that decimal number. 3 times 2 is 6. Oh, this is from before, 6 tenths. That equals what is a decimal? 0.6 or 0 0.6. Right. When I have a decimal number and there's no holes, I write a zero in there. So that's read six tenths. I don't read it as zero and six tenths though. Same thing here, seven twenty fifths. In this case, hey, all right, twenty five is already. I can't go to ten. I know that, but I can go to one hundred. I know that twenty five times four is one hundred. If I multiply the denominator by that there, what do I have to multiply the numerator by? Right, 4. 7 times 4 is 28. And then what is it that I'm going to write here? I'll write a 0 again. 0.28. For our final number here, I have 7 and 3 twentieths. What number can I multiply both the numerator and denominator by? going to get a mixed number here, so I'll write the 7 first while you're thinking about that. Did you say 5? Hope you said 5. Because 20 times 5 is 100, and 3 times 5 is 15. 7 and 15 hundredths? How do I write that? Some students will forget to write that 7 there, so don't fall into that mistake. Point what? One five. So that's here. That's how you write a decimal equivalent. You need to find that denominator, either tenths or one hundredths. And that's not one hundredths. That's hundredths. Sorry about that. I misspoke. All right. It's time for you to try. Remember, in the denominator, we're shooting for ten, one hundred or 1,000. Hit pause. Please do remember to show that work. Hopefully you did something like this here. The decimal equivalent for this then looks like this here. 3.34. I think in this case I've also would have accepted 3.34 Four zero, if you did go to thousandths. Sometimes it's very helpful and very useful to remember some decimal equivalents, like one quarter. 
is 0.25. So that 6 and 1 fourth equals 6.25. If you did do some work, you would have known that this 4 times 25 is 100. For 3 and 12 five hundredths, again, I have to write that decimal equivalent by having an equivalent fraction. Multiply by 2 in the numerator and denominator. So I end up with 3 and 24 one thousandths. Did you write this 3 here when you were writing your decimal equivalent here? And that mixed number there? Now 3 and 24 thousandths, you need a placeholder to be able to write that there. 3 and 24 thousandths. Knowing how to read decimal numbers really helps you when you're practicing this skill. I'll leave you with one last little review. In the first part of the video, we learned how to write this here, 3.56, as a mixed number. We read it as 3 and 56 hundredths, so by knowing how to read them, we're able to write them out. Hundredths is 100 in the denominator, so we have 56 there. I guess the ones that are a little bit more difficult than that is when you have something like this here, where you have 23 and 2 hundredths. It's not that difficult as long as you know your place value and you know how to read those decimal numbers. Now for these other ones, what we ended up doing is we found equivalent fractions and equivalent mixed numbers. And then we would be looking at something that's very similar from before. 3 and 75 hundredths is equal to 3.75. I'd give, give you one last problem here. Sometimes it's easy, nice to remember that one half, oh yeah, one half is just 5 tenths. If you can't remember that, though, it's okay. You have strategies and approaches to follow to go ahead and figure out your correct answer. And remember, when we're going from fractions to decimals, we're shooting for 10 or 100 in that denominator. 